Thank you very much, gentlemen. How Giants did it, well, very convincingly, uh, to my surprise, uh, for some of the decisions that they made in game. Let's start by taking a look at their picks and bans, because there were a lot of sentiments here that Giants got the upper hand in the picks and bans already. Yeah, I think the biggest problem was the Quinn pick, because it, first of all, in the whole composition, they were full AD stacked against a Trundle that is going to build massive amounts of armor, and the Quinn didn't really do anything. I mean, he had to burn his TP, uh, five minutes into the game and was down 10 CS. And I think we can all agree that it should have been a LeBlanc, right? And yep. yeah, that uh, would have uh, been more well rounded and it would have set a clear win condition for them. Yeah, some of the discussion we had on desk is like, why why can does the Queen come out? It is a fine pick in the Corky matchup, but stylistically, it doesn't really suit K Drill. And I think that's the biggest thing we need to take from these picks and bans, as you just saw on your screen. The Giants ban out Twisted Fate, Lissandra, and Lulu. Twisted Fate is a staple for K Drill. He likes. Uh, kind of going even in late and helping his other lanes, whether that's with a global or a teleport. He had really good uh, Alessandra play in the match versus Huma too. He's just a utility mid laner, and they banned three utility mids overall, and that obviously left open the Quinn. The Azir usually is a good matchup into the Corky, but then uh, Kato's team banned out the Azir themselves, and that's how he ended up with the Quinn. But then there was also a question of build path and summer choice, and I don't think we are the only ones that share that opinion. No, indeed. We have a tweet here from uh, G2's Perks, who's watching. Hi, buddy. Who said, Quinn with TP and Cull mid lane, question mark. Uh, nothing else, but we were also discussing how it wasn't the best way to go, Pulse. No, it wasn't, but I, but I think that's the problem with his champion pool. I don't think he knows how to play these champions properly. It's like, what's a good pick here? Quinn into Corky. Well, of course it works, but actually I don't know what to build here. It's not a utility mid, so even if he picked LeBlanc, I actually don't think he'd be able to execute it correctly. Yeah, and that goes in a broader discussion of like game plan, because these, these games are often very slow with uh, some key defining moments, and one of the kind of win conditions or the ways that Copenhagen's Wolves could have won, I think, was Snowball with the Leafs jungle, but that kind of got shut down very early. Yep. With, for me, a fantastic move, and I just want to get the replay on your screen right here. It really, uh, this invade is yeah. so genius in a best of five when you're playing so, yeah. as Ku. What we don't see is really, they did a smiteless grump, which means Nidalee actually has her smite, and she's just waiting in the brush right now. We can't really see her, but it's going to happen right now. Any second. Well, yeah. Yeah, there it is. There's a smite. Ah, Wisdom got the red buff. This is what tilt is made of. The, the most important thing is, though, the flash got spawned, so it gives Elise... She can't do anything in the next five minutes in the match and has to play on the back foot. So that's like, for me, you shut down the Elise early in the jungle and then you just power farm as nearly, which she did. And I think it transitioned into like a very, very big CS lead. Yeah, and, as, and aside from that, uh, Marcel, how does this translate for, for you as a jungle? Like if this happens to you in, in a game one of a best of five series, like, how big is the impact? Like this, you know, I'm tilted instantly. It's like, I'm, I mean, it's so hard to do anything after that because what's your win condition? I mean, you get two lanes, mid and top lane pushed in as a least, you get counter jungle, what you're gonna do? You just have to wait, you know, you just have to wait it out until that other team makes a mistake and against an elite jungle, what she does is she just takes your jungle and you can't really do much and you can't contest it. Then uh, Copenhagen Wolves did a good thing though, uh, despite all those problems, they made the only play they could do and one of the few plays they do is which is snowball the wicked strategy. <laughs> Unfortunately, wicked was stuck in a a matchup that he gets outscaled in anyways to trundle into the poppy unless he gets super far ahead and then builds QSS. This eventually resulted though when Wicked was ahead in a big fight in the top lane. So this is Wicked's TP coming very far from the fight. I just want you to track him in the fight. He's They're cutting around the fight. Like in the bottom of your map, you don't really see them. They're only entering right now when Giants is out already winning this fight. So any advantage that Wicked had at this point kind of got nullified due to this really big fight here. Is this a lot of the Copenhagen Wolves that you've seen uh, in the Challenger series as well, Pulse? All that focus on top lane, but then when it goes bad, it's kind of lost for them. Um, yeah, pretty much. So, like, a Wicked was a player for a long time who was always had the small champion pool, right? And then he was playing Poppy for a long time. Um, and then he had a lot of games where it just didn't work out. Fiora comes to mind, like teleporting in front of Holy Phoenix was like a really big play or a big highlight where he just teleports in and died instantly. An anti-big play. Yeah, an anti-big play. So yeah, there was a lot of resources put on him and we couldn't understand why they were going for like 4-1 compositions where you need him to do well. And then he started performing really well over the last couple of weeks. So it kind of makes sense to do the same here, but when it falls apart, we know what happens when it does. It is a really rough matchup though, because eventually Tunnel, whatever gains you get, he will steal away with the uh, with the, the ultimate. This is a situation I think where Wicked, if he gets ahead, can get QSS and maybe Snowball one v one. But by the point that he couldn't make any improvements or or any of like impact on his match, the siege comp from Giants took over, uh, and I, I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, Edip, our graphic because uh, Xpeppy cut his hair. 
going into this one, we had a nice graphic with the... Speedy J was the helping, though. He was uh, he was building a Spirit Visage oh. into a triple 80 composition. Yeah. Uh, just for the extra additional BM later on top <laughs> of that. Uh, in any case, as I uh, started all things off it, I'm quite impressed with the way that Giants played this game. We have a replay up of the Baron of the final fight. A lot of decision making there was good. You're giving me the eye. I mean... <laughs> was it not as well executed? <laughs> They set up for a 50-50 barrier with a poke siege comp. Oh yeah, it gets stolen. Who, who steals it, True. but then we see uh, some really good package handling, I yeah. think, from Pepe coming out. There we go. Yeah, I mean, the fight takes over, and at this point, you're so far behind already, even with the Baron, that you can't really just do anything. And you see Trundle just tanking everything, and there's the cleanup, ex Pepe taking the last kill, and then they push to victory. Yeah, and this is the last round, I swear, and it's done. Uh, <laughs> but Pepe Nero won that last trade there on Wicked because he was running Exhaust. Um, the support was also running exhaust for Giants. If you then look at the side of the Copenhagen Wolves, we had an Ignite, Braum in a bot lane in a melee versus melee matchup where absolutely due to the threat of teleport, zero action will happen. I don't think he cast an Ignite the first 25 minutes. And then obviously once you get into team fights, perhaps uh, one should bring in exhaust. And But I'm a big fan of double exhaust into triple AD. I think it's really smart from Giants. So for me, Giants, they played slower than they should have in certain moments. Like, they could have made some decisions quicker, but a lot of the decisions that they made were the right ones, and I really liked it. For example, the division from Nidalee after an invade, completely kind of making that top lane matchup even again, so we, we, we could, couldn't get gank advantage anymore. Like, Giants have made some really good choices, so for a new team, uh, I'm impressed. If we... Um, <laughs> new team. Well, okay, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Last two weeks. <laughs> if we assume that the Giants' decision-making or the things they showed in this game stays like this, what do you think the Copenhagen Wolves can do in the series, Pulse? Um... So I didn't think they were going to win the, the Huma series, and well, they didn't, but they brought it to like longer than I actually thought they were going to. Um, I also didn't think they were going to win the Millennium series, and they actually did. So I feel that there's actually stuff they can pull out later on, but it didn't look this dire in that series, so <laughs> we'll see. Okay, well, we need to step away, but when we return, the Wolves will look to tie up the series at one win apiece. We'll see you back here in just three and a half. Double blinding assault and nobody can find Kedril. Now Koo, oh, he just gets crushed under the earth, but Hustlin's already bought time. Fate's call is channeled to pull Zer Nupsalon back, and the Copenhagen Wolves are in full retreat. Koo, Expepi's in trouble, the exhaust has saved his life. Two members of the Wolves are down. Kedril follows shortly. It's going to be a clean ace. And Giants are going to end this first game with a win.